The Honourable Member for Calgary Rocky Ridge. Mr. Speaker, so uh, we are debating this eighth report of the Standing Committee, which speaks of the uh, the rent increase that took place in April. Uh, we talked, and this is what was reported back to the House, given that rent for Canadian military personnel living on bases is increasing this April. And at a time when the military is struggling to recruit and retain personnel, the committee report to the House that the government immediately cancel all plans to increase rent on military accommodations used by the Department of National Defence. So this was something that the committee agreed to unanimously. There was no dissent on committee over this, this point. Uh, all four parties on committee agreed uh, that, that we should report this back to the House. We've now had a chance to debate this and, um, and we'll um, have a chance for individual members, everyone in this chamber, to vote uh, on, on this. And I'm, I'm curious to see whether you know, the Liberals that were on committee su supported this motion. And um, now we'll see if this spills over into uh, an actual uh, expression of support from the, the chamber. But the, the um, April 1st has come and gone. And our forces members did not get rent relief. And so the crisis of housing in the military continues and the crisis of, ret of uh, retention and recruitment continues. There are 16,000 vacancies in the Canadian Armed Forces. There are 10,000 undertrained and undeployable personnel in the Canadian Armed Forces. We are in a crisis of retention and recruitment. This has been observed by the Chief of Defence Staff and everyone on down that has testified at various uh, points over the last year and a half at committee. Uh, this crisis of personnel is affecting Canada's national security. It's affecting our ability to be a, a meaningful uh, ally uh, to our partners in NATO and, uh, and throughout the world. Uh, we've observed Christ, uh, there are, and there are a number of crises facing the forces, including the production of ammunition and the supply of ammunition. We have uh, troops are unable to train for lack of equipment and lack of supplies. We have uh, our, we don't have enough trained forces and equipment to even make um, to, to be able to to deploy and to accept. Um, deployments on behalf of, uh, of allies and um, this is uh, the, the, the increasing the rent on our soldiers on base at a time like this when so many members are facing the cost of living crisis across the board for food and for, uh, for everything else that uh, we're it's, it's like we're asking the troops to, to just to tighten their belts a little bit more amongst all of the other ways in which our troops are, are shortchanged of training opportunities and, uh, um, and, and the things that they have joined the forces. Our, our forces want to deploy. They want to, to, to do overseas deployment. They want to do domestic deployments. They want to train. Um, you know, they don't want to go on an exercise and shout bang when uh, rather than actually fire uh, training rounds. Um, that's that's not what uh, what our troops want to do. So this this statement that uh, we've reported to the House from the committee came amidst reports from uh, that, that began in the uh, the Nova Scotia Legislature, a committee of the Nova Scotia Legislature, where uh, Erica Fleck, the director of emergency management for the Halifax um, uh, Regional Municipality. Uh, testified, quote, we have active serving regular force members who are still couch surfing, who were posted here in the summer, who cannot find a place to live. They are regularly now going to food banks. Uh, she went on to say, again, I mentioned the food banks. People are coming to work hungry. Young soldiers are coming to work hungry and leaders are trying to feed them as best they can using their own money. So. This, this is testimony in a, a provincial legislature. This isn't a, you know, unverified news report or, or rumor that uh, there are 
uh, hungry troops or, or homeless troops. At the same committee, uh, Craig Hood, the executive director of Nova Scotia Nunavut Command for the Royal Canadian Legion, testified, quote, what I came across was some startling information on serving members of the Canadian Armed Forces posted here. Living rough in tents, living out of their vehicles, couch surfing, engaging in interpersonal relationships for the purpose of securing housing, which oftentimes puts them as victims to domestic violence. So this, this happened in December of 2023 when this, the, this uh, explosive testimony occurred in the Nova Scotia legislature, or the, 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 the legislative committee. And so what was really startling was when asked about this in the House of Commons, the minister, uh, in response to a question from the member from Selkirk Interlake Eastman to address these allegations and to uh, ask what is being done and why they're failing our troops, this is what the minister had to say about that testimony. Mr. Speaker, of course, the member opposite is once again badly misinformed. In fact, when this was reported in the press, the Canadian Armed Forces in Nova Scotia canvassed all the members of the Armed Forces and determined that all of them were properly housed and the reporting was false. The Minister of Defence actually said those words in the House of Commons. He dismissed the reports of the Executive Director uh, of the Royal Canadian Legion for Nova Scotia and Nunavut Command and the Director of Emergency Management of the Halifax Regional Municipality dismissed them and called their claims false. It was quite astonishing. And it was in uh, no small part because of this that we really dug into the issue of housing in the military. Uh, fortunately, the members, and, I, and I'll, I'll point this out, that there are two Nova Scotia, Halifax area MPs on the Defence Committee and both of neither of them presumed to actually deny what was going on in their own city because they know. I mean, this is a fact, Mr. Speaker, that there is homelessness in the Canadian Armed Forces. There is food insecurity in the Canadian Armed Forces. This is the state of the Armed Forces under this government and the cost of living crisis uh, faced by millions of Canadians that uh, is being acutely felt in the Canadian Armed Forces. We have been studying or have been studying the crisis of housing on base and we've had alarming testimony at the Defence Committee uh, from Umbud Lick. Quote, I heard from a member's dependent who shared with me that they had been homeless for five months. I've heard from families using food banks. I've also heard from some who are one paycheck away from not paying their rent or needing to make a hard decision between food and rent. While members do not expect a lot from their barracks, I was shocked to see some deteriorating single quarters on base that are not acceptable for any human in any situation. This from the military ombud. Um, we talked, he said, when asked the question, do you know someone who's at risk of being homeless or at risk of accessing a food bank? He said, everybody nods. Everyone knows somebody. This is his testimony at, uh, at committee. So amid all of this, we have a denial from the actual Minister of Defence that there is homelessness or food insecurity in the Canadian Armed Forces. Um, so we have uh, examined this quite thoroughly at committee, and we will have a report in due course with recommendations to Parliament. Um, but we have uh, we found that... Uh, it's not even just the residential housing units. It, you know, it's 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 eight, it's it's uh, uh, the HRUs, it's PMQs, and it's barracks. We've heard of toilet facilities not up to standard by any means, mold on various walls and ceilings, and so on. Um, and we've heard time and time again that you know it, it's things like this. It's things like lack of access to a to a home that drive people out of the Canadian Armed Forces at a time when we need our men and women uh, so much. At a time of elevated need, 
we have a crisis of retention and recruitment. Uh, in response to an order paper question that I had asked, we have confirmation that recruitment is not keeping up with people leaving the forces. So we have 16,000 vacancies, 10,000 people undertrained, and the forces are, sh are shrinking. It's getting worse, not better. Um, we've seen how uh, there, the shortages in wait lists of personnel to obtain a home is sometimes longer than the postings. And so when members of the CAF have to repost from one end of the country to another, this is a trigger point. This is where families, military families, have to decide whether they can continue in the forces or not. If, uh, if, a, if, a, uh, uh, if personnel have to transfer from uh, Halifax to Esquimalt, and maybe they own a home in Halifax already, and, or maybe they have access to a residential housing unit that isn't terrible and, and uh, falling apart and uh, you know, has a working toilet and everything, and uh, they are going to go to another posting where they might be five years on a waiting list. And then they have to go into the market, and they have to find a place to rent or to buy in a, a, an expensive place like Esquimalt. Well, everything in place is an expensive place in, in, in Canada after uh, nine years of this government. Under nine years of this government, we've seen rents double as an average across the, the country, more than double, almost triple in some large cities. We've seen the price of housing across the country double. Interest rates are high. Interest rates are being fueled by uh, deficits, which trigger inflation, which trigger higher interest rates. We've seen no restraint from this government. We've seen no balance or no ability to rein in or, or do anything about this crisis, a crisis of housing and how, access to housing across Canada. But when it comes to our armed forces, the least that the, the armed forces could do is not boost up the rent on, on the, the small group of people who are at least fortunate enough to even have a base house, never mind the plight of force members that are on multi-year waiting list lists. There are thousands of CAF members waiting for uh, access to, to, uh, to base housing. And um, so we have, uh, we've, we've actually called upon the housing minister to, uh, to come to committee, housing being one of these triggers that are, that are causing people to leave the forces and presumably a factor in the uh, difficulty of the forces to recruit. So the minister has not come to committee to answer for this. Uh, we note that this budget that they just tabled contains exactly zero dollars for additional housing on base. Zero dollars next year too. $1 million the year after that, if I remember correctly. We're, uh, as far as out as we can see, the budget projections through to 2029, I think they've got a total eventually of some $14 million for military housing. Well, they're short thousands of units, Mr. Speaker. How are they going to fix this problem without budgeting for it? And they're not even going to start to even address the, the backlog and the shortfall in construction for base housing, not with zero dollars this year and zero dollars next year. Um, we are, um, you know, they, they are building under the existing funding, they're building about 20 homes a year, Mr. Speaker. Think about that. They're, they're, they've got thousands of people waiting for a home and they're building 20 a year. They're decommissioning close to that number a year anyway. They're barely keeping up with the ones that have fallen apart uh, to the point that they can't even uh, be used anymore. And you know these 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 properties are, as we've we've seen from testimony, are pretty rough to begin with. So there's also nothing to address this issue in the uh, the defense policy update that was just tabled. In fact, this defense policy update, I, I don't even. It's a misnomer to even call it such. Um, it is full of uh, seeking, ex you know, exploring options and reaffirming existing prop, um, uh, reaffirming existing policies. There's, there's literally nothing concrete that is new policy. 
unless it was formerly their policy not to consider options, uh, so assuming that they were that they were ever going to consider options to replace our submarines or to uh, acquire, um, you know, to to undertake and and see through NORAD modernization or to build. Um, and procure any of the kit that we need, unless it was their policy not to consider options before, uh, you know, a new policy of considering options is hardly a policy. Right. Uh, so, and, and getting, taking it back to housing, there's nothing in there on housing, um, uh, Mr. Speaker. So, the, um, uh, this is, um, you know, it, it seems like such a small thing, you know, and I've, I've heard the Liberals say this, that, well, don't, you know, don't, don't the Conservatives know that, uh, that, that the rents are capped at 25% uh, at of, of, uh, of the force members' uh, salary? So, they're, they're, you know, this is capped. They can afford it. Well, Mr. Speaker, the rest, their wages are not keeping up with the rest of the cost of living increases. Their budgets are already stretched. So now you're, even any increase is going to reduce the standard of living for that family. And we've heard time and time again all these other factors that drive people out of, of the forces, the, it's, it, the, the difficulty with repostings, the way that that affects families. If you're established in a community, you know, if you've already got a family doctor in a community and you know, you've got kids in school and the serving member's spouse has employment, and then you say, well, you've got, to, you've got to redeploy or you've got to repost across Canada. And now, well, maybe the spouse's job isn't transferable. Maybe their credentials aren't uh, uh, recognized in another jurisdiction. And maybe they're going to be waiting five years to, to find a doctor in that community. Oh, and by the way, maybe they can't afford a home in that community. And they may, and they may lose the base housing if, they, if this is a family in PMQ and they won't have uh, the same accommodation in the new post. Uh, these are all factors that... that affect retention and recruitment. So this government has a crisis of retention and recruitment. Uh, the forces are, in the words of the defense minister, a death spiral of, of, uh, of uh, crisis of retention and, and recruitment. So why not do the easiest thing they could have done, uh, even if it's only symbolic, even if it's, uh, if, if it's not, um, you know, wouldn't be, it's, it's by no means, you know, suddenly meeting the 2% uh, of GDP obligation that we have to our allies, but uh, it would be something. And it would send a signal to the troops that they don't bear the cost of, uh, of, um, of, of the, of indeed, the cuts that actually are, are taking place that they announced, uh, the $950 million. So I, I think I'm, I'm out of time. I've, I've said enough on this, uh, on this for now. I'll take the questions, and um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments. Kissing on Kamaltar, the Honourable Member for Courtney Alberta. Well, first, Mr. Speaker, I, I want to thank my colleague for advocating for military uh, uh, veterans and their families. It, it's greatly appreciated. But I do want to go back to 2015, Mr. Speaker. And I, I recall knocking on doors and meeting military personnel living in the Comox Valley in my riding. Uh, and, Mr. Speaker, they couldn't find housing. They, they were struggling then. So my question, I guess, to my member is, is, does he regret that his government didn't put more foresight into building units, housing units for military personnel? Because it takes planning and thought, and it needs to be long, long out. And the Liberals have failed to do that. They, they inherited uh, you know, a, a failed plan or, or no plan, if you want to call it that, when it comes to military housing for, for uh, military personnel. Does my colleague regret it, and what would he do differently moving forward so that we can honour those uh, people that are serving our country? Member for Calgary, Rocky Ridge. Well, I, I will say that this government uh, does not have a monopoly on, um, on non-investment in the forces. Now, that's not to say I agree with the premise of his question. I would go back to a previous Liberal government, if we want to keep going back in time. We had a decade of darkness. We have the Prime Minister's father who decimated the military and, and really even withdrew us from firmly from the orbit of the Western defence system. So if we want to keep going back in time, we, we can, I guess. But I'm going to focus on the government that's here. 
I came here in 2015 when this government was elected, and they have systematically ignored national defense and national exactly. security. And it's about time we had a government that will take these things seriously, become a, a meaningful and willing ally to, to our alliance, take our national defense seriously, and stand by our troops. Questions and comments? Kishina Kamaltara, the Honorable Parliamentary Secretary to the President of the King's Privy Council. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my, the member opposite. Uh, interestingly enough, we actually haven't had a chance to work together in the, uh, we've been elected the same year, but we haven't actually had a chance to work together. I'd like to thank him for the work that he is doing on the National Defense Committee. And um, I wanted to talk to him a little bit about uh, the posting, and he did talk about the postings and the difficulties with respect to uh, finding homes uh, for our military families when they move every two, three years, depending on where they're being posted. Um, I think he, he knows full well that I have two children serving in the Canadian Armed Forces, so I know very well the challenges that families are faced. Um, he mentioned that there was no money in the budget for um, military housing. Page 307 does actually have information with respect to the commitment made, but I would like to get a sense from him if he could give us an, an example, if something he heard during the uh, the uh, study on maybe ex uh, extending the length of time for posting, so rather than posting every maybe two, three years, did they th talk about anything about maybe expanding that to maybe five, six years instead of having to move around so frequently? I'm not sure if that's something he heard during his uh, study. Thank you. Member for Calgary, Rocky Ridge. Well, it, it, we have heard that in in multiple studies that we've undertaken. Any time that we are talking about uh, factors that affect morale and affect recruitment and retention, that comes up. And uh, you know, this is, um, I guess, it's always been thus. But um, with the cost of living being what it is, and many people that are, are, I won't say stuck, but they're rooted in a community um, now in, in maybe a way that, that earlier generations were not because of connections to employment that don't, don't transfer very well or, or housing. If somebody bought a house 10 years ago in one community and they get reposted across the country, this, this creates a significant uh, hardship. Um, so, so yes, we, we've, we, I think there's a lot of awareness at the committee, if that's, that's what she's asking. Uh, I don't have a copy of the budget with me, but I'm, I'm quite certain if, if, I'm, if she's referring to the chart that I'm, I'm uh, zero. sorry, zero. it's zero this year, zero. zero next year, one million the year after that, by 2029, 14 million, that isn't going to build enough houses to make even a dent in the backlog in, in housing. Exactly. Questions and comments? Can you come out there? The only member St. Albert Edmonton. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And picking up on the point made by the member for Calgary, Rocky Ridge, for about 4,500 units that are needed to be built to house the men and women of the Canadian Armed Forces on the bases across Canada. We saw this government deliver its latest budget, which provides $61 billion in unfunded deficit spending. And yet when it comes to investing in housing for the men and women of the Canadian Armed Forces for this coming year, the government is providing a big fat zero, a big fat zero for the following year, and then a mere $1 million in the third year. What does that say about this government's priorities when it comes to their, frankly, lack of support for the men and women of the Canadian Armed Forces? The Honourable Member for Calgary Rocky Ridge. Well, I, think, I think it says everything about, yeah. about priorities. Um, we have, uh, we are in a, a uh, we've had testimony at the Defence Committee from uh, the Chief of Defence Staff and, and others uh, that, that have clearly stated that we are in perhaps the most dangerous times that have faced, in fact, in the words of the, the Chief of Defence Staff, maybe since the Second World War, at no point since uh, then, and yet the, the dithering over um, uh, all these critically needed changes that have to be made, critical procurements, uh, things as, 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 that seem to be problems you'd think we could solve, like uh, ammunition production, uh, we dither away, we, we produce fewer artillery shells in a month than the Ukrainian army fires by lunchtime. 
uh, and they are they, while they desperately need need these supplies, um, we don't even have enough to ramp up and replace and and fully stock our own forces. Never mind being a meaningful uh, exporter to allies who also need this kind of kit. So we we we've got production issues. We have the retention and and um, uh, and recruitment crisis, and. There's no commitment uh, from, uh, from, from this government that we, we know that. The, the defense minister himself has said that his own cabinet um, kind of shrugged their shoulders and, uh, and, and did not listen to his, uh, his plea for, uh, for, for more money. Uh, we are under an, ob a, 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 an obligation within our alliance to spend 2% of our GDP. That's a, that is a minimum commitment within the alliance that, that underpins Canada's security, and there's no plan to get there. Questions and comments? Oh, you all remember for Courtney Alberni. It's getting long. Mr. Speaker, I, I, you know, I asked earlier, and I just wanted an answer. What would the Conservatives do in terms of offering a plan? Because we want to work with the Conservatives on this, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that we build housing for military uh, personnel, their families, and, of course, those that serve, our veterans, who we are always and, and, uh, indebted to for the remainder of their living life, Mr. Speaker. Does my colleague suggest an idea or a plan that he'd like to present uh, or discuss in this House that we could possibly work together on? Because we'd like to see, you know, public lands kept in public hands. But those public lands should be prioritized, absolutely should be prioritized for military personnel, veterans and Indigenous peoples. Does my colleague agree with that? I'm a member for Calgary Rocky Ridge. Well, the, uh, the member will have to wait for our platform, and I'm not going to, I'm in no position to launch it today, nor will I, uh, I, I, I don't have a, a plan to table. It's not, this isn't the, the, the place for it, but there is commitment from our party, from our leader, to finally take defence seriously, and there will be a plan tabled to ensure that the men and women in our forces get the respect that they need, they get access to uh, the housing that they need, and that they get the kit and equipment for the training opportunities and, and to be ready to deploy if necessary, Mr. Speaker. We're